his birth, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to give you a few pointers just in case this might be one of your first uh, candlelight services that you attended. And the main thing is, is safety for all of us, okay? We're going to be dealing with the flame, obviously. We want to dampen any parents. Uh, we don't want to dampen that down. We want to invite all the children to participate. But parents and grandparents, it's up to you. Just use good judgment and a little discernment, okay? Um, we're going to start. We've got a couple of the from the Del Bono clan are going to start lighting up here in the front. And we're going to work our way towards the back. And the folks that are sitting in the aisles, what you'll do is take your candle that's lit, let the person sitting next to you dip it into your flame. Don't want to do it the other way or you're going to have wax all over you and all over your dress and suit and everything else. So lighted candle, unlighted candle, okay? Everybody got that? Very good. And then also under Pastor Steve's uh, direction at the end of the service, he'll tell you when you can blow them out after the, after the ceremony. And then we're going to have some trash cans and stuff set up by the exit doors that you can uh, dispose of them. Or take them home if you want to get ready for the next Borrego blackout. <laughs> okay, in front of you, let's get started. In front of you, there's a white book, a hymnal, if you all want to take it out. going to turn to page uh, 142, and when you turn there, you're going to notice that it's not really a hymn or a song, it's a responsive reading, page 142, and if, if you don't have a hymn right in front of you, just share with your neighbor, that's part of the Christmas spirit anyway, so just lean over and, and, and read off of their shoulder. Page 142, it's, it's entitled Christmas, and what we're going to do is that top part there, it says leaders, that'd be me, and then right below that is people, that would be you, okay? And we'll start off with that, and, uh, and then you give a response after I read each line. And, and don't be afraid, just sing out, enjoy yourself, just pretend the Lord Christ himself is standing right here in front of you for you to worship him this evening. Okay, if everybody's ready, page 142. God, having of old time spoken unto the prophets, hath at the end of these days spoken unto us by his Son. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. He was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might become rich. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Let us give thanks, as we remember that Jesus came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. We give thanks unto our Lord God. As we remember that Jesus came not to do his own will, but the will of him who sent him. We give thanks unto our Lord God. Oh, 
Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One, who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Everything inside me cries for order. Everything inside me wants to hide Is this shadow an angel or a warrior? If God is pleased with me, why am I so terrified? Someone tell me I'm only dreaming Somehow help me see heaven's eyes and before my head agrees my heart is on its knees holy is he blessed am i I hold you in the beginning. 
this time we've waited for the promise all this time you've waited for my arms did you wrap yourself inside the Okay, if there's anybody who's not teary-eyed, they want to come up and do the rest of it here. <laughs> that was great, ladies. Let's take our hymnals again. We're going to turn to number 124. <laughs> That's me. Is that my breathing? <sighs> okay. Um, 124. This is a, uh, the Christmas story, the birth of Christ. And so um, uh, we're going to read through this. These are excerpts from Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2 from the New International Version of the Bible. And uh, as you see, um, the lettering, some's in black, some's in red. I'm going to read the black, and if you would read the red, that would be great, okay? So, let's begin. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. Now, do you mind if I just make a couple of comments as we go through this? Let me pull this out of my pocket. Maybe that will help. Um, 
Actually, you know what? Let's, let's do this. Let's um, turn me off in the house, but keep it on for uh, the feed, if we can do that. So we've got some people watching from uh, across the country, which is really kind of exciting. So if you didn't know about it, we, we stream our services on the internet, uh, if you ever want to watch the services. So I'll talk loud, okay? And uh, so you guys can hear me. But I wanted to share the Christmas story as we look at this. So Joseph and Mary are betrothed to one another. And that is kind of like our engagement period, but it's a little bit more official or a little more formal. So they, they haven't gotten married yet, and Mary is pregnant. And so Joseph feels that Mary has been unfaithful to him, and so he is contemplating, in fact, he's planning on putting her away. And the deal is, under the betrothal, it, it was much like a marriage. You actually had to give a certificate of divorce to break the betrothal period. So this is what he's wrestling with. He wants to do it privately, not publicly. It gives us a, a glimpse, I think, into the character of Joseph, that he was a just man. And of course, he loved Mary. I mean, this was the girl he was going to marry. And so he's got to be just tremendously brokenhearted about this. And so as he is wrestling with this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to the Son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So as he's wrestling with this, the angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream and lets him know she hasn't been unfaithful to you. In fact, she is most blessed among women. This is the one that is going to give birth to the Christ child, to the Messiah that God had predicted for hundreds of years, the Savior of the world that would come. And so he takes Mary, and they're going to end up getting married. But before that, there's an empire-wide census that takes place. So they have to travel from Nazareth all the way down to Bethlehem because their lineage is of that of King David. Both Joseph and Mary were descendants of King David, so they had to go all the way down there in order to be registered. While they're there in Bethlehem, she gives birth to Jesus, and then the setting shifts to the hill country of Bethlehem. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Now I get the, just the impression that here these shepherds are out at night. They bedded down their sheep for the night, and they're probably just around the campfire looking into the starry sky, and they're, bam, an angel of the Lord in all of his majesty and glory is there to tell them that good news has come to you tonight. And as you look at the passage, you notice that this is good news of great joy that will be for all people. Jesus came to be the savior of the world, not just a select few, but he came so that everybody could be saved. And he also made it very personal, though, too. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. You see, Jesus came so that he could reconcile us back to God. He came so that he could lay his life down for you and for me. Because we're separated from God. That's why we need to be saved. It goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned. And they were separated, they were banished from the Garden of Eden, and ever since then, man is separated from God. That's why Jesus said you need to be born again. You need to come back into that relationship that mankind once had with God. And the way that takes place is by Jesus coming and making a way where there was absolutely no way. You see, in order to be in God's presence, in order to be able to go to heaven and live with him forever, we've got to be perfect. And none of us are perfect. All of us have done bad things. The Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So there's absolutely no way 
that we could dwell in God's presence, and that's why Jesus came. He came to bear the punishment that I deserved. He came to pay the price that, that you need to pay so that we can be brought to God. And so his death on the cross opens up a door so that I, so that you, through faith, can come to God through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, what does that mean? How do we do that? Well, the answer to that is kind of like what uh, Charles Stanley said this morning. You've got to put up the white flag of surrender, you know? You come before God and you admit, you say, God, I can't make it. I recognize I can't make it on my own. And so I come to you through faith in what your son has done. And so we, we confess our sins and we acknowledge that we are sinners. We repent of our sin and we come before God seeking his forgiveness. And you want to know what? Whoever comes to him, he will forgive. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's what we're celebrating at Christmas time. It's God's love for humanity. You know, when you think about it, how could God show us that he loved us? The way he did was by making a way where there was no way for us to be reconciled to him. The way he demonstrated his love for us is Jesus coming and dying in my place and your place so that through faith in him, we can have our sins forgiven and spend eternity with him. Now, that's the good news, and that is good news, by the way. But as good as heaven is, you know, we can have peace with God right now. When we come to God through faith in Jesus, we're never alone again. And let's face it, we're all going to face the storms of life. And I would venture to guess that there are probably some in here that are going through some storms right now. When I speak about storms, I speak about issues that can affect us relationally or economically or health-wise. I think most of us are going to faith face health issues as we get to the end of our life. The good news is we can still have that peace inside of us. We can still have that deep-seated joy because of Jesus. We're never alone again. He brings us that peace, and he brings us that guarantee that we'll go to heaven. And so, great reason to celebrate tonight. Great reason to remember that Jesus is the reason for this season. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Father, we come before you tonight just so grateful for who you are and what you've done for us. Father, we thank you so much for bringing Jesus into this world so that we can have access into your presence. Lord, my prayer is that as we go forth from this place, we will let that light that you've shown into our hearts illuminate, reflect off of us to a dark world, that you will help us spread your love and your truth throughout this land, oh God. You are the light of the world. We want to be light reflectors. And dear Lord, if there's any in here that have not come to you yet, I just pray that they would do that tonight, that they would come seeking your forgiveness, knowing that they are accepted in your presence through Jesus. We thank you for him, and we rejoice the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas.
see how the room is lit up? Let's go out and let our light shine to impact a needy world. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas. Let's blow them out on three. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm going to make my way to